Oh my! <laughs> we get a full what, view. What of just happened? Ball. You get me fully into the show. My eyes. Welcome Man. everybody to Clickbait Sports. I will be your host today. I'm Five Points Vids. We have our compatriots here. That's Good Sports. Tom Grassi, Urinating Tree, and Scooter Magruder, distributed throughout this. Before we get started. I just want to explain how the super chat works. We typically do not read the super chats on the air, but those get contributed to each individual creator and whoever has the most at the end of the show loses and has to suffer punishment. Tom yeah, uh, I lost got a story. Yeah. last week and he was supposed to get a Minnesota Vikings um, Aaron Rodgers jersey. Yep, yep. Which so, has which he paid for expedited shipping and did one hundred and seventy eight dollars. I gave to the Minnesota Vikings. I gave it on Saturday because, like, I was swamped with draft stuff in between making six videos on Saturday. I was like, you know what? Let me go and order this jersey. I'll pay for expedited shipping. It'll get here no problem. It was one hundred and fifty bucks, then an extra fifteen for shipping, then tax one hundred and seventy eight dollars, wow. and they haven't even shipped it. <laughs> Apparently, their store is run like their organization. It's straight trash. Dang. So, Shots have been fired. So apparently, Tom now has 178 more reasons to hate the Vikings. Yep. And 55 cents. And 55 little tinier reasons. Right. Well, let's put it this way. Pain. Maybe it's like their field goals during a clutch game and they shot it wide. Oof. Oh. Oh, they just missed the conveyor belt. They were yeah, that's my like, package well, and they just had a ticket. They went left. to LA instead. Yeah. So five points. So, what are we going to be doing in this episode? Break it down for thank us. You. Thank you for that segue. So every one <clears throat> of us here, I think, is upset about our drafts in some way. Uh, though we got great players, I don't think we got who we necessarily wanted. So we're going to go around and sort of talk about our teams and how we feel about what we got in our draft chat. Everyone in the chat, how are you feeling about your draft? How did your team do? Let us know Absolutely. down in the chat if you thought Same. that your team did well. All about and what, letter lastly, grade? what letter grade would you give your team, chat? Let us know. Yes. Uh, I'm sure it's F is probably a lot of those. And then at the end of the show, once we get through each of our individual drafts, we'll talk about how we made, how this show, this very show this program of, yes this program made divine diablo going to the raiders a reality yep we did i think i'll take most of the credit I, for that I, too i'm so proud of this community it's yep. I'm so proud it's so clear that mark davis watches this show yes. like mark if you're watching with your slimer haircut speaking of haircuts speaking of awful haircuts look at tree over there uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah sure yeah i mean at least i can get my hair cut unlike you dang <laughs> and here's that's good sports below me he looks like he's been sitting in the wilderness for three days he's dang. got the shirt he's got the kempt up like beard the hair is this just a roast jacked. session yes yeah exactly man that's how we do it and then tom over there looks like he saw a beautician his hair is perfect like he did you have school pictures today is that what uh, went yeah, down? i actually got it after school today so i i went and i taught and then i went and got a haircut oh, and nice yeah. No, he's just doing his Buddy Holly impression. He's going to sing Peggy Sue and then get on an airplane with the Big Bopper and Richie Valens. <laughs> yep. That was the most dated reference. Yes, it was. On uh, the show ever. I, I don't know how many people got that. 200 years old. <laughs> yep, they're just like, what? Who's who's that? <laughs> Buddy <laughs> Holly on a plane crash? The, Dear day God. the music died. Uh Brandon, you're looking like uh, Andrew Jackson with your hair down there. Just Whoa, like I, was on, going, on a 20. I was going Doc from Back to the Future. Right? <laughs> like, like, a, a young Doc. A young Doc. <laughs> a young yeah, Doc. Like, Doc Wiley what? from Mega Man. And another change. Scooter, you have wait, your wait, wait, hair wait, wait, has wait, been wait, unbraided. Wait, speaking, speaking, the of hair's back to the future, speaking of Back to the Future, you guys know that there's a Denver Broncos clock in the opening scene of that movie, don't you? Denver Clock Tower. Really? I do now. Just the I Denver Broncos clock on Doc Brown shelves. Look it up. Oh, educate okay. yourselves about important <laughs> stuff. Apparently, we've right. been time warped back to the '80s. Everyone, somebody had to stop the flow of this show to yeah. bring. We were in the '60s, <laughs> and now we, we all grind to a halt, man. Come on. All right, I want to start with Scooter, 
and the Cowboys. Oops. Scooter, and this sort of intertwines between Scooter and Brandon because Brandon's team did Scooter's Make team count. wrong. And Man, bro, like why though? Oh, you got a problem with the Broncos too? All right, I'll get in line. Why? All right. Brandon it's all your Scooter. Listen. Okay. What's I'm going to start and I will give my team overall a B. Solid B. Okay, this is an 85 B. I like what we did. The problem is you got people like Brandon Perna, that's good sports over here jumping in front of us when we could have had one of two cornerbacks, J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan II, for some reason, ended up gone. Literally in every mock draft that I saw, they were both available. Not one were both of those players gone, but it gets down to the draft. The Denver Broncos, for whatever reason, decide to take Patrick Sertan II. I truly believe the Dallas Cowboys made the best out of their situation. We were panicking. We didn't know what to do. So what do we do? We trade back. We pick up that extra third round pick. And then we get our Sean Lee replacement. Might even be the Leighton Vander Esch replacement. Micah Parsons. This man is a monster, a terror on the field. I looked at some of the tape. This man is flying. Okay. And we're going to need him to fly because we're going to have to deal with Kadarius Tony on your Giants five points. And we're also going to have to deal with, well, oh well, all the other receivers in, in the NFCs. But I like that we got some speed. I like what we're doing. And you look, you go down the draft, we filled a lot of our needs. Defensive tackle, O-line at the tail end there. So I like what we did. Solid B. Solid B. I, as a Giants fan, I, I have the feeling I'm going to be hearing Micah Parsons' name a lot. He's going to clog up the middle. He's going to do a lot of disruptive things. And so I was not happy about that when I heard that. Like, I would have been more upset if you got Sertan because then I was like, oh, gosh, how are we going to get anyone open uh, in the secondary? But I thought that you guys had a very solid draft, and it's going to be a very interesting NFC East next we did. year. A lot of people were saying we reached on some of these bigger cornerbacks. Uh, Dan Quinn is our defensive coordinator, and he likes those bigger, lankier cornerbacks. So a lot of people think we kind of reached for some of the cornerbacks, but I don't. I think this man knows what he's doing, just not as a head coach. Right? Get him in Get him in the defense position. Wait, let him be a coordinator. And let hold him on. Back it up. Work. Back it up. You have Dan Quinn as your DC. Uh -huh. You have Mike McCarthy as your OC. Or as your head coach, I'm sorry. Yeah. Should you bring in like Daryl Bevel to be your OC? Like, who's who's this going to well, be? Like, what other choke artist coach should you bring in to your we squad? We still are rocking with Kellen Moore, so Let's we're still Ryan rocking. Well, we're still rock, rocking with him, so, so we'll see. he's going to graduate to head coach, and so then you can bring in uh, maybe Kyle Shanahan after he gets fired, <laughs> and then you'll just have the triumvirate of. <laughs> Of uh, choking coaches. The triangle formation. Listen, I'm excited, though. I'm excited for our draft. Solid B. Chat, what do you guys give the Cowboys draft? Let me know. All right. That's good. You are now up. Tell us what you think the Broncos did and then give them a grade on uh, how things turned out. Because you did not look happy on draft night. You should have said that's good sports. You're on the clock, but I'll forgive you for not uh, not saying that. Uh, Scooter looks like he hasn't paid his internet bill in a month. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, he's using that uh, potato webcam yeah, again. He just put like, a hole in there, bro. On in the stream yard, it looks perfectly fine. It's probably it your connection with out. Brandon or something like that. I'm actually surprised. I have a better camera than someone in this room. I'm usually <laughs> the worst one in here. And it's not I'm because I look webcam. ugly as sin. I'm getting a new webcam next episode. That's my punishment. It's not We're your webcam. It's connectivity, connectivity, dude. No, I don't you think, think it's your cam it's not at your cam. all. Which cam did you use on your Twitch stream? Your Twitch stream looked like fire. Like it okay, just looked yeah. amazing. So I think I think it's it is the connection, then. but it's this. I use right. a camera. So you're gonna call Comcast camera. after. Gotta, Was this what you uh, were trying to show here? No. Hey. Oh no! I, I tried to scroll down and it just accidentally clicked it. 
Oh, okay. Just like last time when someone, I think someone put like fart noises as their comment and someone showed it right on the <laughs> stream. Yeah, because sometimes right. you want to scroll down to new comments and accidentally clicks. Yes. So work on your aim there, buddy. No, Brandon. that's what my mom Whoa. said too, but she was wrong. Ooh, Brandon. Okay, run, yes, run my draft. Mouth. My Denver Broncos draft. Also, James Hash, uh, $5 super chat. Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing says hello. <laughs> Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing gives me like $200 a month on Patreon. I get that reference. <laughs> plumbing. So uh, thank you, James. Okay. I love the Patrick Sertan pick. Mm -hmm. Great corner. Broncos are going to need a corner in 2022 because uh, Bryce Callahan on the last year of his deal, Kendall or uh, Kyle Fuller coming in on a one-year deal, don't know who's going to be there. So it addresses a need in the future. But Justin, uh -huh. but Fields, Fields is sitting right there, right there for them to take. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying. The last time the Broncos snaked the Cowboys to take the player they wanted, that guy was. That guy was Paxton Lynch. So knowing that the Cowboys wanted Patrick Sertan makes me think something out of Patrick <laughs> Sertan's control is going to curse him and curse the Broncos and curse that pick. Uh, other than that, like Scooter, solid B draft uh, all around. The Broncos make an aggressive move to get uh, Javante Williams in the second round who I luckily, by a miracle, said I thought he was maybe the best running back in the draft in a video prior to the draft without really watching anything about any of the running backs. Just one little nugget I read somewhere, said it in a video, made me look smart. And if they make me look smart, it makes me feel real good. Um, and then we get uh, Quinn Miners, senior bowl hero. Mm, Why? I wanted him. Yeah, nobody knew of him. He comes in, he just starts bulldozing guys, but more importantly, every photo of him is with his belly just hanging out. Just his big man belly, and he is he's he's like a our version of Gardner Minshew on the offensive line. And for that, I'm thankful. And uh, you know, anytime you throw in an offensive line piece, you assume it's gonna work out because question. You Who's need those. starting at quarterback for the Broncos this oh, that's season? Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it's Aaron Rodgers. Uh, no, no, you're starting Aaron. Teddy Bridge. Yeah, well, that's just because Aaron Rodgers is going to ask to take week one off um, because he will only play in a traditional 16-game season, and the Broncos, unlike the Packers, will accommodate him. <laughs> so it is your belief that Aaron Rodgers will be a Denver Bronco? Is that what you're saying? It's all, it's the only thing I can hold on to right now. <laughs> it's I all need I have. I, you know, I the care. interesting thing is no matter what, whether you took fields or not in the first round, the net result is still the same. You're probably not going to be good next year, right? Unless some type of miracle Ooh. happens. Ooh. Like I'm just saying, the, the team is basically saying we're not going to get our franchise QB. What? Easy there, fella. Easy not there. Good? Not do you really good. do you have a Super Bowl winning roster with Teddy Bridgewater as your quarterback? We have a Super Bowl winning roster. We just don't have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So, okay, uh, so basically, yes. but but basically, what You're the Broncos with a Super Bowl winning quarterback right. though? You're punting your quarterback quarterback situation until next year. So as a fan, if I'm not an optimist, I'm thinking, all right, we're two years away from a franchise quarterback because Teddy Bridge is not a long-term solution. He could be good next year. He could get you to the yeah, playoffs, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really picks. just kind of signaled that you're still rebuilding. Sorry. We have less than 30 days until we find our franchise quarterback. So. <laughs> you got time. In that world. Uh, Adam Schefter was apparently talking out his rear end. With oh, don't guys. worry. I don't know. That's what you want to take out on this after this stream. Don't you worry. Don't I think he was just apparently it was a combination a of, of a lot of stuff. It's like, oh, dude, trust me, seriously. Excuse me, it was an accumulation of information. That's what he said on the Dan Patrick show at least six times. Dude, I can do an accumulation of information, man. <laughs> I got People it. shit on me all the time. I got an accumulation for you. Yep. I also I have an accumulation in a certain other area too, but I, I'll have to <laughs> save that until later. <laughs> all right. Well, um. What was that Three. guy that you were just saying who you drafted, Perna? Which guy that you liked? Quinn Miners. Miners? 
All yeah. right, so that was Ed Peep's picker as well. All right. All right. All right. So apparently, we're messing with all the names here. So Yinzer <laughs> is up next. Mm -hmm. He laughed at me on draft night. That's fine. Fair enough. But then he got his comeuppance. I you I worked the I worked. Oh, you faked that laughter though, man. My laughter was legit, even though people <laughs> think it's fake. That was real, I, and it I wasn't was because thinking. they picked Kadarius Tony. It's because you said right before the draft, like right before the pick, if they pick Kadarius Tony, I'm gonna lose it. I did say that. <laughs> I don't know why Kadarius Tony popped in my head either. Like I was just like, that is the best wide receiver that's available, and if they do that, I'm there. gonna freak out. And they and I did. You did freak out, and then right. you abused your poor chair. But like, did, did you um did you uh, massage that chair in oils as um for a token essential of oils? Yes, essential oils. Essential oils, uh, myrrh, a little frankincense for the flavor. Are you gonna mix intermittent intermittent fasting with essential oils down there, grown man? <laughs> I, I just want to know if that combination. Fast. Anything is possible. What you guys don't know is that I'm intermittent fasting right now, and we talked about this for like five to ten minutes before this stream started happening so that is that why it's a potato happen. as a webcam like it's just there to like yeah, yeah. like the potato signifies okay. the you're, potato is the signal of intermittent fasting it's yes. the international uh, uh, your internet signal. is also imminently fasting too so that's, i i think it's because your <laughs> internet is malnourished now it's gone too long <laughs> i don't know if it's my internet though that's the thing because i just streamed i just streamed on twitch i just streamed on twitch so i don't know we got to said it's it intermittent it fasting dude that's it's it. okay. That's we'll just we'll make you out later. That's true. So Tree, you did say prior to the draft that you did not want Najee Harris. <laughs> I didn't want a running back in the first round. What and did you go want? out and do the I exact line. opposite? I line. Yes, maybe the Rooney's watch this show too. Along maybe Al Davis or Mike Davis and the Rooney's get together and have watch parties on Clickbait Sports, and they said we're gonna piss that Yinzer off. So grade your draft. Um, well, as I said, I'm not a big fan of running back in the first round. I thought they had bigger needs on the offensive line. Their entire left side's gone by free agency retirement. They have huge questions at right tackle. They had too many holes to fill to really address with one or two guys. And, I mean, they don't have Mike Munchak, who I consider to be one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. They replaced it. They have a new offensive line coach. They had to fire the old guy that they brought in as an assistant two years ago. That apparently they pay some of the lowest salaries for assistance in the NFL. And I don't know how you're going to develop. I mean, you hope maybe Chukwuka or Korofor will maybe do something. Maybe um, they like Dotson. Maybe it's um, like I know they brought in B.J. Finney, but I don't know if he's a starting caliber center. I know the guy they brought in, in the third round from, I think, Eastern Illinois. Like, they like him, but he's probably going to be a couple years away. The tackle from Texas a and is probably going to be a couple years away. Second round, they pick a tight end, which, I mean, okay, could help maybe with a little run blocking, but I feel like it's more for short-range passing because Eric Ebron has uh, dropsies issues, especially within five to ten yards. So I feel like you're just – they're deluding themselves into thinking they're that one piece away instead of realizing that, okay, we build the line, then we build the running game. So I give it a C. You know, you with that haircut, you kind of do look like Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> well, you can go kiss my ass. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> nice ad hominem attack right there. The thing is, okay, look, if you if you classify Kyle Pitts as a wide receiver, you arguably got the best tight end in in the draft. So, I don't I don't know why you're so upset. I think I think you did okay. Um, I've laughed at you all mean, week I've because got, you're I've upset got no about it. Problems but... about the players they picked. It's about position and need. Those are my issues. Yeah. So what? Okay. Give it a numeric, an alphanumerical grade, a C plus. Like a, yeah, C plus, C, C plus, or That's a six. Fair. That's fair. I do like the fact that the organization is still delusional into thinking They've that. They've been delusional, dude. Yeah. So Steelers don't tank. You know this. Tom Grassi. Oh, what is this? Oh, we're looking at the picks here. Oh, I was like, did someone join us? And we had a guest and I didn't know. All of a sudden, <laughs> Scooter's camera looks. Oh, no, never mind. No. <laughs> As I <laughs> said, intermittent <laughs> fasting. Does yes. my camera not look good to you guys in the stream yard? Like, no. does it look bad? Because it looks perfectly fine to me in the stream yard. Then <laughs> I look at the stream. Is intermittent is not not working. Working. This is what's happening right now. Um, louder milk. 
that sounds like a great name, by mm-hmm. the way. Oh, yeah. I really don't like to grade day three picks because they're more shots in the dark than anything more for depth. If they work out great. If not, oh well. Tom Grassi. Tom Grassi. All right. Tom- so here's the, here's the thing. Here's the here's the, the shakedown. So I feel like a lot of people uh, crapped all over the Packers draft. I feel like a lot. I feel like a lot of grades I saw were like D's or F's or something like that. And I got to say personally. It's not an exciting draft, but it filled so many needs because the Packers literally were one game away from the Super Bowl. And they're like, hey, remember when Kevin King got burnt in the NFC Championship game? Let's go get a corner in the first round who runs a 4 2 5 40. That will be good. Remember when Corey Lindsay, our all pro center, he went over to the Chargers? Last, let's draft a center with our second pick. We got Amari Rodgers, who's like Randall Cobb 2.0. So we got that receiver, which was great. And then we, we triple dipped on the offensive line, got another speedy corner. Like, I'm, I'm all about this. We even got help for Kenny Clark, like in the fourth round. So, or excuse me, fifth round. So, yeah, I, I put this as a B plus. It's not going to blow anybody away, but, like, I didn't think you needed to considering our roster was already really good and we brought everyone back except Jamal Williams, Corey Lindsley, and uh, Tim Boyle. So I think at this point, like, I love this draft for what it is, and I think that it makes them competitors as long as we have Aaron Rodgers still on the team. Would well, you say that uh, Brian Guntenkunst is yeah. getting, like, an unfair sort of – portrayal of how he drafts because of the the Jordan Love pick because it seems like he's been fairly solid through so, his drafts not per- yeah so I, I actually did this whole thing last year and kind of like went through Goody's picks because he started in 2018 right and like he hit a home run on guys like Jair Alexander Darnell Savage Elton Jenkins was amazing like those are like the big like three Rashawn Gary who did really really well last year even though a lot of people like questioned the pick at 12 but like he's like hit really well on those guys. Um, besides that, it's a little bit rougher because you have guys like Jamon Moore, who's not on the team anymore, EQ, Josh Jackson, we picked up in the second round as a corner. He hasn't panned out at all. Um, the 2020 draft you can't even look at because the only guys who really partook in that were Kamal Martin, because uh, Josiah Deguera got injured, and AJ Dillon did that one really good game uh, against the Titans. So, like, it's too early for, say, the 2020. But, like, I think that he's overall a solid GM when it comes to drafting um, because the guys that he has gotten in the early rounds, Got particularly him. besides Josh Jackson, have been really good. So, uh, he did, he, no way he can know Josh Jackson wanted to be an actor, too. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's um, that's the thing. Like, Josh Jackson, when he was drafted, a lot of people wanted to get him in the first. He played like eight college games, he played them really, really well. We played like eight games and we drafted him in the second and he just hasn't seen the field. So just, it's not because of injury. Like he just hasn't been good. Um, so, I mean, I think we have to like wait and see, but a lot of people are crapping all over him for the entire 2020 draft because you barely saw any of those players play. And I think that that's why there's like that skewed um, kind of outlook and perspective. 2020 is still a weird draft though. You pick a quarterback when you have other needs, you pick a running back in the second round. I mean, A.J. Dillon looked pretty good in the short sample size, but the, the I don't know how much pick, he plays with yeah. Aaron Jones being brought well, back. That's the thing. Like, I get that pick 100%. Like, when I, we, they first drafted, I'm like, what the hell are we doing? But the year prior, like, Jones had, like, 16 touchdowns. That's what so I mean. Like, he had a breakout year. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't think we were going to be able to afford to keep him because, like, we went all in in free agency when we got Preston Smith, Zadarius yeah. Smith, Amos, Billy Turner. Like, we spent a crap ton of money and like we're not in a good cap space right now. So I think the Dylan pick was like, hey, you know, Jamal Williams and Jones are both in their contract years. There's a good chance we don't have them next year. And we don't want to be looking for a running back, just like we didn't want to be looking for a quarterback in case, you know, either one they declined or two, we couldn't bring him back. Plus, well, AJ I, Dylan looks great in shorts. Oh, he's the quad father. We love him. Oh, oh, <laughs> not as good as you, Brandon. Um <laughs> d- Tom. Yes. How does this? How did the Packers draft, in your opinion, appe- did it appease Aaron Rodgers or was it completely done independent? Like, how stubborn is management and how I, do you I, think that affected it, the draft at all? I mean, so I said this on draft night. I don't know how you draft three offensive linemen and a wide receiver and say that doesn't help Aaron Rodgers. I think that this draft gave the Packers the best opportunity to win because there before even this whole Aaron Rodgers crap came out, there has been this kind of feeling of like, 
the last dance for the Packers in that they kind of gone all in. They kept a lot of guys. It's hurting their cap. They're kicking it down to 2022, which is going to be a rough year for the cap. And it's kind of like, hey, let's just see if we can run it back again with a very similar football team. And I think that this just helps the team as a whole because a lot of people are like, well, why are you drafting a corner? Well, because our offense was the number one scoring offense in the league last year. So the offense wasn't the problem, right? It was the defense. And, you know, you play against the Buccaneers and how we didn't have Bakhtiari and Rodgers got smacked around, you know, by that that pass rush. Yeah, okay, so we triple dip again for the second year in a row in offensive line and we go get a really speedy corner. So hopefully, you know, Scotty Miller doesn't blow past him this time. Mm-hmm. Like, I- Brandon, our champion is ahead. Chris, you're... Wait. Whoa, what was <laughs> that? that? All right, Brandon, our champion is ahead. Chris, you're just saying my name, telling everybody where you want to go. I hate you. So Uh, I thought it was like a random ad they threw on this. Like, wait, what? Yeah, I was like, we got ads now. Damn, we can get ads moving on up. Which, by the way, by the way, so Perna and I are uh, beefing a little bit, obviously, uh, because of this whole uh, Rogers to uh, Denver thing. So uh, we have uh, discussed some future plans, and uh, on Tuesday evening, it will be Brandon Perna versus Tom Grassi live stream uh, talking about the future of Aaron Rodgers. So I think you two should fight. But, uh, you can, you can. And that where's that topic. going to be? Uh, it's going to be Tuesday at what time did we say, Perna? Like five thirty? Something like that. Something, five, somewhere five, around five, there. Five, yeah, yeah, something around there. Around on both of your channels, though. Yes, both on your both YouTube channels. channels. Oh, you yeah. both yeah. need to go to Green Bay, fight to the death. Winner takes home Aaron Rodgers. So I will, if I will see that wins, and I will bring a sword and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whether, so now, right. we've all talked about our drafts, but five points. What about the Giants draft? Because mm-hmm. I was tuning in live yeah, to mean. everyone when the picks were being made. Yes. And I just happened to see when the pick was made for the Giants, you weren't that happy. Yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. we had this video to throw to right here. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this. Hold on, I can I can get the clip. Hold on. <laughs> Hold this on. As we talk about this, can we take a moment to talk about the glories of five points? Vids losing his shit every draft year. It's been the third year in a row that he's fallen apart over a Giants pick. Who were the picks the last two years? Daniel Jones and Alex Tom. I mean, uh, <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Thomas. Thomas. Hold on. Who? Andrew, Andrew Thomas, Thomas, the tackle. So he he guys, had a rough year who? last year. Andrew Thomas was so good. Yeah. Who? He was decent. Hey, um, point, not James. compared to Werfs or Jedrick or the oh, Jedrick Tristan Wills Werfs or with the Bucks. anyone else or Mackay Becton. Better. All right, here it is. Hold on. <laughs> what? You miss the important part, though. You miss the part where you say, "If I don't pick Kadarius Tony, at least yeah. I Because it, it, it has no context before that. And that's it's me laughing good. for about three minutes. It's still good. I, I literally lost my shit for a while. Right, oh, like like I, and it was in a state passing. of delirium, and I did not know what was happening. Yes. Uh, and then at the end. Super chats came in and I had to put plungers on my head and good. Oh, good. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, but th- that's what happened on draft night. Now, look, in retrospect, did I act up a little bit? Um, did I overreact? I think so. Well, considering what we know sincere. now, my, you know, my reaction was sincere. I wasn't playing up for the cameras. That's how I really felt at the time. Uh, look at us. Look oh, at you. Free at Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and Scooter, you can give me some insight on this. You know, we got the fourth bet. Like to me, my mentality at 20, right? So we traded down. I've at this point, I'm watching the draft happen. I've completely Here, forgotten. Here's what you need to understand. Would you be okay with drafting Tyreek Hill at number 20? Would you have yes. had that same reaction if it were Tyreek Hill that you drafted, knowing what you know? If 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 it's Tyreek Hill, if we got Kadarius you guys we drafted don't... Tyreek Hill. Can you say That's what Tyreek I'm telling Hill-like you. Tyreek Hill-like player, guys. Yeah, but this he's is... not Tyreek. He's Kadarius Tony. So I know. What I'm saying is was... he's going to be better than Tyreek Hill. That's what I'm oh, saying. That's possible. my bold prediction. Yes. That is okay. my bold, bold prediction. prediction. Of the clickbait. 
I've seen this man for four years. It, it's like Barry Sanders esque. Really? That's what you're getting. I've seen people try to tackle this. I've seen eight people miss this man. I'm telling you, I'm scared. And that's why I'm glad we got Micah Parsons because we're going to need someone to wrangle this guy. He's untackleable. It's wild. When you watch the film, it's wild. Well, that's what I'm hearing. You know, I'm an Auburn fan. We don't really pay attention to the SEC East. Like, you guys are irrelevant over there. It's just, you know, it's over there, you know. Like, mm -hmm. over here in the West where we have the real teams that actually go to the national championship game. Like, you guys are just the stopping point in the SEC championship game. That Listen, If you're good enough to make it cyclical. there. cyclical. It it's a stopped. cycle, okay. It's just cycled onto the West, right? Okay. It's about to like cycle a, back. The Gators right. are about to get three to four championships give it some time okay it's like it a time. unicycle i don't see the other side of the cycle here all i see is alabama yeah, yeah. and auburn winning all the sec championships anyways could so my emotions were just i forgot that we got a first we got the bears first round pick i forgot about that hall yep and i'm thinking okay if it's not devonta smith if it's not Devonte smith if it's not jalen waddle and if it's not jamar chase do what we need, which is edge or uh, an offensive lineman. Apparently, our offensive line is perfect because we went through seven picks and didn't pick a single one of them. Well, so, like you just mentioned the three like top receivers, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at last year's uh, draft, what Ruggs goes, Judy goes, then CD Lamb goes, and then the best receiver was probably Justin Jefferson taken, uh, you know, fourth out of those guys. So yeah. maybe Tony is is like is like that. He's I'm hoping so. Actual best. So we're deep on weapons. We got a uh, running back. We got hopefully Saquon's healthy, but we didn't do anything to address the offensive line. Now there's free agents that we could acquire. Uh, I did like uh, O. How do you say it? O. Julari. As being would you, we have would you, have rather, would you have rather drafted Quiddy Pay at 20? What Absolutely. would that have done for you? All day. Days All day. I miss the in days of the ball. Giants having a fearsome defense where people were actually I afraid don't. of us. Nope. Don't miss it. Nobody fears the Giants defense. Nope. You're just getting shades of Brett Favre ignore Tom. Nope. Yep. Don't. I don't I don't miss yeah. it at all. Now, now if we get it. Aaron Rodgers. Why is Tom and, the uh, one that's got just a normal name? Our problems are solved. Now, I will give this a grade <laughs> because I have to. We got two – I mean, it's all defense and 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 a running back and a, and a top-level wide receiver. But still, I guess Joe uh -huh. Judge has convinced Gettleman that this offensive line rotation thing, they're like, oh, Nate Solder's coming back. Well, we'll be fine. And I'm just like, no, we're not. We had one of the – I think 26th rank – uh, offensive line last year. Like, we're in the bottom of everything. Daniel Jones has an internal clock that's worse than the Denver Broncos clock at the beginning of Back to the Future. And Ooh, uh, what a callback, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. <laughs> it's it's that broken. And we're gonna be in trouble. I just I'm not I'm not the type of optimist like Scooter or uh, Brandon, I'm not going to be disillusional about my team. Delusional about my team. I think we're an eight-win team at best after this draft. So I give it a B for better hope that they work out and don't lose ten games again. It's four years in a row of ten double-digit losses for this team. So I don't know if my heart can take that. So there we have it. All the grades now. The next segment, well, you know what, Tom? Yeah, what's up, buddy? Without giving away your video that's coming out. Oh, I see your little Denver Bron. That's the old school logo right there. Yeah, that's, an, that's an 80s logo right there. <sighs> wow, that clock is broken. Oh, my gosh. Where's Back to the Future set anyways? What state it's in is California. That? Oh, so why would he have a Broncos clock? Because it's supposed to represent that he's eccentric and a rebel. If uh, he wanted to be any more of a rebel, he would have had a Raiders clock. So he was an original edgelord, that Doc Brown. No, being a Denver Broncos fan does not make you an edgelord. Maybe he liked maybe he liked Morton or maybe he liked Elway. Possibly. Elway was just entering the league in 1985. So I'm Tom, without that. giving away your video that's coming out yes. later or the meaty parts. 
Mm -hmm. Walk us through this Aaron Rodgers thing. Give us some nuggets of information that we don't know. Break it down. And uh, enlighten us as to whether you think this is smoke or whether you think uh, that guy down there that looks like the the um, the lead actor from This Is Us is going to be uh, <laughs> rooting for Aaron Rodgers this year. Okay, so here's the thing. When I so I did a 30 minute video on Monday. I I don't write scripts for my videos. I just write stats and stuff. I wrote out six pages of notes for for Monday's video. I went back to 2018. I looked at inter. <laughs> That's pretty phenomenal. Uh, I looked at interviews. I looked at a <laughs> number of things. So I'll take him going to Jeopardy. That's fine. Anyway, so the thing is is that there is a problem between the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers right now. And if there was anything that knew that Adam Schefter reported, it was that you had guys like Goody, Mark Murphy, the CEO and Packer, uh, president of the Packers, and Matt LaFleur flying out to Aaron Rodgers during the offseason to speak with him at separate times. You had Rodgers' uh, agent David Dunn flying to Green Bay to try to work out a contract. They wanted to do a restructure. Rodgers said no because he wanted that guarantee because after this season, they could move on from him with relative ease. So as everything has kind of occurred, when Schefter dropped that last Thursday, it was implied, and I would think the narrative was really pointing towards something happened that was like, Rodgers wants out now, like he's done. And that's kind of like what the media did and ran with it. What the reality is, and what Adam Schefter t said today on the Dan Patrick show, was that Oh, well, no, there was no breaking news. There was no single incident that, that actually did that. Instead, it was an accumulation of information. And, and I quote, it just happened to happen on draft night because he said that, you know, everyone knew this. He just shone a light on it. Like I went through and watched the Bro, Are you thinking, telling me this whole thing is just bull? Is that what you're telling me? Because that's what no, I know. Cause like, here's the thing. Like there is a problem between the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. The thing that is bull was that there was an event that it's like, Oh my God, this is a game changer now that now he definitely wants to leave because, and I quote, because Dan Patrick flat out asked him, he asked Schefter today and he says, do you know he, meaning Rodgers, wants out? And Schefter responded, I believe I know he wants out. And he's like, because what does anybody know? He literally went with that. It's a 17-minute interview when I watched the – I literally took notes on the entire thing. So, like, it was – a lot of it is kind of now trumped up, and it's been out there for a week. And now there's this thing about, you know, he wants Goody fired, which Schefter could not confirm. You want uh, this idea that he's calling him Jerry Krause that Schefter can't confirm. Like, none of this stuff is confirmed. It's just conjecture. So, could it have ha can Aaron Rodgers lead the Green Bay Packers? Absolutely. However, like, the only thing that has changed from January to right now, since from last week, is that the public knows about it. Will it. Aaron Rodgers be starting at QB for the Green Bay Packers this wow. season? I strongly believe he will. I also agree. There's this, you, like, you have to make that work, right? Especially like, after today, I strongly believe. Because with James Jones, he came out and had a whole big thing. Sorry to interrupt, Five. Like, the, he, he said this whole big thing about how he talks to Rodgers, like, every day. And he thinks that they can work through it. You had uh, John Kuhn, who said that he thinks that he could work through it. AJ Hawk. Like, you know, they, there's positivity and optimism. Again, there's a possibility that it doesn't. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not trying to be a homer here. But I also want to be realistic and say, like, hey, you know, the stuff that has come out that is kind of driving this narrative that Rodgers is saying to be done is it's not true because he hasn't come out and said that he wants to be done. He's talking to the Packers, and that might be the reality of it, you know, when it comes down to the end of it. But, like, that's why they're talking. So this was all for ratings. That's what I'm hearing. I, it was I, clicks. I, I think that's it was, what um, I'm hearing. He's been being desperate. I feel like that's what's happening right and now. And I quote, what does it matter when it comes out? It just happened to be on draft day. That is from Adam Schefter today from the Dan Patrick interview. Then why did you release it on draft day and not earlier? 
there because there were so many people who that knew this. I just shined a light, and he basically said. And the best part about it, and I do again the whole video so about this it. This is just old news being rehashed. Correct. We, he said, we all knew that Aaron Rodgers had an issue with the Packers. Yes, like, years ago. Yes. And now he, and again, the information that he gave of them flying out there, that's different information. But the best part of that interview, he said, whatever is floating around out there, we probably don't know the majority of the story. Oh, Jesus. So the then why thing- the actual hell, oh, and I, that, that, was, that was restraint right there. Are we dropping it like it's this big bombshell? Like it's, it, 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 it's insane to me that now we're running with this narrative like, oh my God, he wants out like right now, trade me, trade me, to the point where we were hoping that, you know, teams on draft night weren't going to, you know, trade for him. Exactly, like five. It's it, like that part annoyed the crap out of me because Dang. that is the So who is the real clickbait sports? That's Think it. about it. Adam, I just learned yeah, I think we might be out of jobs. Think about Boys, it. I just learned in your rant that I can I can qualify a hot take by saying I believe right before it. <laughs> I like, believe. Dude, I believe I know he wants out. Like that's yes. what he's saying. He's like a lot of people told me, so I believe I know. And again, that's my out. Yes, nobody. Yeah, I also believe Rogers. that I want a million dollars and uh, a beautiful wife by my side and a harem of beautiful women. That probably ain't happening either. That's clickbait. Harem. Harem. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not a harem? You know what? <laughs> I, I'm super famous on the internet. I can get all the ladies I want. Apparently, right? It's all the TikTok and all those fa- like hype houses. Are it's the same shit. We can all have harems. You know. You're like Imagine. 0 for 10 today, by the way, Tree. Like you've I'm dropped for so 16. many. You like you're just you're terrible. You're like I'm I'm gonna have to mute you now. All right, oh, we got about reality. Mute me. Why not? We got about. I'll have 13. like a little statue. I'll be like. Eh. We got about 13 minutes left. I do want to be before we get to Devon Diablo and the Raiders. I do want to cover something that somehow everyone found out that not even hockey fans knew about was the incident between the New York Rangers, my team, and the Washington Capitals. So since I watch the Rangers a lot and I was watching the incident. I will take you through it and try to explain this in football terms. Okay, for you got to break it down. You got to break it down. Right. For Scooter and uh, Brandon and Tom, guys that probably have never seen hockey other than uh, they just know the that it exists. Patrick yeah. Waugh, Peter Forsberg, Joe well, Sackett. And you should, you should wor- watch more Adam hockey. Stewart. Hockey is amazing. So, it is very fun um, to watch. Peter McKinnon. If you could Nathan. imagine... Uh, let's say, okay, Tree brought up a great reference. If Vontez Perfect was to hit, say, uh, Juju Smith right in the like head the helmet, the helmet, like and blade. knocks him out, right? And then the league office is like, we're just going to fine you. We're not going like to suspend you. And we'll slap on the wrist. Right. And then the next week, Which the Steelers happened. and Which the happened. Bengals were playing again the very next week. So the player and then Vontez perfect is starting, right? And he is not getting suspended. All he got is fine. And the first thing, and all of a sudden the rules committee in football says fighting is now legal. Like you can take off your helmets and just start hitting each other. That's what happened. Basically before the puck even dropped the Rangers and the capitals just started fighting and beating the snot out of each other. Tom Wilson gets on the ice. Twitter. When did this happen? What's that? When did this happen? All last Yesterday? night. Yeah. yeah. I, I even saw the beginning of that game. Like they what? All the shot. They're and like, I've seen none of this on Twitter. This is, is it unprecedented, or this is actually precedented. This happens a lot in hockey. Fighting is completely legal. If you get into a fight out on the street, you're you're getting, you know, an assault charge. In hockey, they're like, hey, look, as long as you know you guys agreed to it before, like you're good. If you want so, to see the video, just go to at Brandon Perna on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. They just start throwing gloves. Then then five minutes later, Brendan Smith tries to take on Tom Wilson. He kind of got beat up. And then guys keep fighting throughout the game. There were more people in the penalty box than legally allowable in New York State for a gathering. And they were all breaking COVID protocols. So... <laughs> um, it finally breaks up. Then, then I think the refs just said, "Hey, could you take Tom Wilson off the ice?" <laughs> was basically what happened. And then he went to the locker room and never Who returned. Was Tom Wilson? Fighting. 
is basically in stop. scenarios. Tom it Wilson is uh, Vontez perfect. Tom Wilson yeah. is basically Vontez perfect. Or okay. Miles Garrett with a helmet in his hand. Yes, mm. if Miles Garrett did that every season. Yeah, Miles okay. Garrett's every beat of Miles Garrett. Yeah, every yeah, Tom Wilson, like perfect, is a really good player. He just does really stupid shit. Where does no pun Will, Where does Wilson compare to like a guy like Todd Bertuzzi? Nah, um, Bertuzzi was much more violent and blatant with his. Yeah, Ber- Bertuzzi permanently injured someone. Wilson has yeah, yet yeah, to do well. that. But he has um, he has injured, he has injured some people, people. long term. Like um, Sunkfist was out for a couple months from a hit from Wilson. Aston Reese was out for a couple months. Carlo was out for a good bit, and I know Panarin's going to be out for a few games too. So he hasn't yeah, done Panarin's any permanent not. damage, but he has injured players. Yeah, he's he's hurt people for sure, but not not maimed them the way that Todd Bertuzzi did to um, what was the kid's name Cook, I think, or. Um... He he basically had to pay his entire livelihood for the rest of his life was what Bertuzzi ended up doing. But anyways, um, and no no one remembers what he did to Bertuzzi before that, by the way. Uh, But but what happened in last night was the example of why the NHL has gone a little tone deaf, but is also awesome at the same time. Like people love the fact that they can just fight like that. And it got a lot of attention to the league, bad attention, but of course in, in both politics and sports, I guess no negative attention is ever bad attention. Right. So like is Tom, is Tom Wilson considered like a tough guy amongst hockey players? Mm, he's considered a goon, not like a, a tough guy. He's not like Scott Hartnell or somebody that is an enforcer. Like he's just considered a guy that goes around. He's like Brad Marchand level. Like he's just an agitator. He likes to hit people. Che- I get who's a football player that is on the same level as um, as an agitator that just gets under people's skin. Maybe Juju, like Steve Smith. Just- Trying to get under people's skin and doing dirty stuff while he does it. Maybe Julian Edelman, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. A type of just an instigator. But that was what the incident that? last night. And I hope oh. I educated you all. Scooter, name an active hockey player besides any of the ones that we just mentioned. Right in point. Let's go. There you go. Nice. Nice. There, oh, that's right. I'm, getting, the- I'm getting more into watching the lightning. Like, I know that the playoffs were supposed to start because, look, I'm doing some game plays. That's the goal. Do some NHL game plays alongside the Lightning in the playoffs. So I'm getting ready. And I don't know when the playoffs start because I looked it up last night and they said it didn't start till the 19th. But, yeah. <laughs> but then it was like iffy. Maybe it's going to start the 19th. Maybe not because of the COVID protocols and everything happening. So when the playoffs start, I'm there. I'm tuned in. I'm with you guys. All right. Yeah, I, I think, oh, you know, they are the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's end the show with Divine Diablo, our favorite player, everyone's favorite player, the guy whose name is a walking dichotomy. It's heavenly and satanic all at once. The yin and the yang. What was his 40 time? Does anyone know? I think it's like it a was four point divine. three. It, it was, was divine. divine. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, forty times. Yeah, a four point four five. Four point four five. So he wasn't the fastest but guy. He's got some skill for like a two hundred twenty-six pound dude. But we insisted that the Raiders draft him. We, in fact, in our mock draft, had him as their first round pick. Just which, to be honest, was not that far off. If you think about who they actually ended up taking in the first, I was I was worried because they had picked Ravon Merrig in the second round, and I'm like, oh, they should have picked Devon Diablo here. And then, lo and behold, the third round, I get a little note on my Twitter that says they picked Devon Diablo. So I'm like, wow. It's crazy because they literally could have interchanged the first and the third round picks. And it wouldn't have mattered. No, you could have interchanged the first, the second, and the third round pick. It's the first and the second round picks. Like you could it. have had Divine first. You could have had Leatherwood second and maybe Merrick third. This is I literally... I, I don't know if Merrick falls that far, but still. Yeah, my brain is uh, is so bad. I totally forgot that we even did that until I saw <laughs> I Tom tagged or, you all. I tagged... The, yeah, so Tom was Tom was like, oh, yeah, we did do that. <laughs> Chat we did nuts. it. I like I can't remember that, so that stuff at all. It was really funny too because like 
I hate all of you. But it was really funny because uh, like we were kind of like down the dumps a little bit getting into the, like the third round. And we we're like, OK, as soon as that Divine Diablo picked up, like my energy went through the roof. And I was like, let's go. This is the greatest draft ever now. I didn't have to do it with the Packers just because it was that exciting. <laughs> all right. I've got our mock draft here for the top 10 and we're going to reset it. Uh, so we did get the first two right. Woo! We whiffed horribly on number we three. Got fourth. We well, got the fourth, and we, we should have got, got the quarterback, fifth. Though. We should have got the fifth. We nailed the sixth. I'm surprised by that. Well, we didn't. We did Waddle, but they we picked Chase uh, instead of Waddle. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I got that backwards. I thought that they – no. We, we did get Jamar Chase going in the top six. We just got it in the wrong team. So they got Waddle there at six. Uh, the the Lions got Panay Sewell, and then who did the Panthers take? J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn. Horn, which we thought was a reach. The Broncos took Patrick Sertan, and that really messed up with um, the Cowboys, who worked together to stab the Giants right in the back. Mm -hmm. like, just I mean, more than I think about it, the more I believe like J.C. Horn isn't that much of a reach. I mean, it's more preference with the Panthers, I feel like. I like Absolutely. the Cowboys' confidence to trade with the Eagles. Like, yeah, go ahead, take whoever you want. It's not going to matter. <laughs> it <laughs> like, was we'll a win-win. The spot. We are not scared of you at all this season. <laughs> and they like, knew we, that we they know, could. We know you're taking Devonte. Like, we know you're about to take him. It doesn't matter because we're about to take Micah Parsons. And what does he run? A four-three. He's tackling everyone. Okay. Scooter, what was your best 40 time in your life? Four seven. Four wow. point six nine. Four six nine. So I could That's say four bad, six, dude. but I just say four seven because it's kind of disrespectful if you say a four six nine is a four six. So you just say four seven. Still not bad though. I mean T I L not bad. Scooter was bad. Not bad. Yeah. Me, mm -hmm. me, I have all the speed of a um like a like a dump truck if that. i think, I think your clock is still go. running like they're still waiting for yeah. you to finish mm -hmm. yeah i am i i, 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 I have a scale quick, running for me in fast. dallas uh, <laughs> it might finish in about three years maybe. i do remember out in dallas i think your 40 time tree was in the sevens i'm not just i'm not just i'm just putting it out there i'm just I mean, I, kudos to you for running it well, I think the problem with me was I'm not a runner. I'm more like an incline walker. I, I, I've never been like fast. I mean, you can obviously tell, right? I'm not fast. I I might look sleek, but I'm I'm not fast at all. All right, that's what I mean. I do not have an athletic bone in my body. Let's because like, if I were, I would not be doing this shit. I'd probably be <laughs> doing something a lot better with my time. I'm not mentioning about you guys. I'm mentioning it about me because like I'd probably be like at an office job, like talking about the glory days of. I don't know, high school or college football. Four touchdowns in one game. Yeah, that right. was good. Yeah, that's your career highlight, dude. Since Tom did not get punished, uh, we will add up the super chats now. I think I only made 93 cents, boys. So I mean, again, I, I don't. Yeah. Tuesday is going to be fun, Perna. Tuesday is going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. For one of us, it's going to be a real good time. <laughs> Goots, what do you think your count is? Did, did you get some bits down mm. there? Any subs? I got a sub during this stream. The problem is I got to make sure not to stream before clickbait sports because that does something when you stream more than and, once on yeah. Twitch. It does not send out the notification every time to everyone. It messes mm -hmm. up the algo. Yeah. It's yeah. between. I think it's between with YouTube. Three. Like if you release too many videos, it messes it up. I think it's between <laughs> Tree and uh, and Tom. For I think Tom might get double punished. Right. I here. think double. I'm, I'm only at like. 89 90 bucks like so uh tom congratulations you well, not only not get Brandon. double punishment you get aaron Rodgers going to denver or la i mean again, i spent over 170 dollars on the yeah. jersey it went directly to the minnesota vikings oh i know what you need to do you need to get a poster of aaron roger i'm sorry anthony barr tackling aaron Rodgers. i think you should have to print out that uh aaron Rodgers as a denver bronco poster like that mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and then put it behind you during the next clickbait sports or right next to the pack cast thing right or there. better Just, yet i think mm -hmm. you need to build a shrine to adam schefter <laughs> No, it would be great if you got a Jesus candle, but instead of Jesus, you had Adam Schefter printed on that. Wait, so you... what was the 
punishment last week that's still on the way? Do we it's have his, point? It's, it's a Vikings Rogers jersey. So I think we just do the a Broncos Vikings jersey and just get it all. <laughs> a Broncos Vikings jersey? <laughs> I'm sorry, a, a Broncos Aaron Rodgers jersey and just keep it going. Like just add to your collection of Aaron Rodgers jerseys on other teams. Other te- right. And then if you get the punishment again, you'll have to get a Giants Aaron Rodgers jersey. And uh, we'll just keep going. No, he'll get a Giants a Brett Favre jersey. Actually, wait, that doesn't make sense. No. Okay. That's well, Jets Brett Favre jersey. I, I like the idea of, of printing out the poster, but if I will defer to you guys. Yeah, chat. What's a good punishment for Tom? Let us know right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. My life I wish good. I knew how to do surveys on here. Well, There's that's because be people way. love you, Tom. And because of that, we need to undercut you like crabs in a bucket. Absolutely. Yeah. You we need, to, going, we need to bury you back down. That's Ooh, how we keep people deep. in line. Because when people deep. get above their means, they become Pat McAfee. They become all <laughs> the big time athletes or like the sports guys. And they become super famous. And we're sitting back here bitter and talking about football. Sure. I this is why um, we do this. We bury people. And we keep them in the I, muck and the grind. I think um, should buy a purchase. Packers jersey saying bye-bye Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tom needs to buy an expensive framed Says, uh, photo. $175. Justin Field Bears jersey. I got a uh, Kevin King jersey. Kevin uh, King jersey. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Justin Fields jersey. Oh, Jordan okay, Love. Kevin King getting dusted poster. That See too. Available. They probably do. A lot of people are saying a Packers Golden Tate jersey. Mm. Oh, here it is. From the is Fail Mary. I do despise Golden no, Tate. No, you just need to build, get a, a referee jersey and have that hanging. Jets there. Aaron Rodgers jersey. That sounds like kindling. That's just a fire starter right there. Ooh, uh, I've got breaking news. The Dolphins are signing Patriots defensive back Jason McCourty. The ooh. McCourty brothers have been separated. Oh, That's no. That's terrible. What, 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 they need to sign Devin McCourty. So yeah. what am I doing? <laughs> we don't know yet. We don't know yet. You're getting this tattooed onto your body. Nope. <laughs> That's a hard pass. <laughs> You've got to get this tattooed on your neck, Tom. <laughs> Okay, how about neck tattoo? Why don't we do a 24 hour? You got to change your Twitter profile picture to Aaron Rodgers in a Broncos jersey. 24 hours. That's it. That's it. I need to say Steelers losses. I think most of my stuff's from like the last Steelers loss. I need to change. That is a shameful, and it doesn't even cost you anything except your dignity. Oh yeah, I do that all the time. And money. (laughs) Twenty-four hours. Money can't buy happiness for the rest. Chat. Chat. What are we thinking? Give us one if you want that. that. Type one if you are down for Tom changing his profile picture on Twitter. To a photoshopped Aaron Rodgers in a Denver Broncos jersey. Daddy like that. Daddy like that a lot. I'm getting mad ones in my chat. Mad yeah. ones are being. That's it. Are being tapped. That's it. It it has been decided, boys. We did it. Uh, are we doing? We did it. Are we allowing him to explain this or no? Is that no, part of the point? No, Does he, he get no explanation? He didn't get insurance. He didn't it's even be, get his pack his Vikings jersey on time. And don't give me the okay, you gave $170. There's no excuses. It didn't happen. The I mean, best so, part was when Tom changes his profile to the Aaron Rodgers Broncos things, there's gonna be a ton of people who don't watch this who think who <laughs> think Tom is dropping the news that Aaron Rodgers and, has become a Bronco. Uh, and guys, I'm doing Brandon, this next and, week. I'm not doing it this week. Next week? No, you have to do this week. right now. You did not say right we now. You just, just said for 24 this. hours, and That's I'm going to do that next week when this is already old news, and I'm going to do it before clickbait, and then I'm going to change it. So, You know what? If that happens, the second you change it, I will amplify it to the masses. We need That's massive right. retweets, guys. Fine. Massive we need, we, need we need no 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 we need a ha- we need a tweet new profile picture now too that's part of it hashtag new profile pic we need a tweet you said yeah, I'm not gonna tell anybody about it, it. it is 
Jen McIntyre. That's fine. We'll know. 24 hours? I'm on Twitter more than I'm, I'm, right. I spend with my family. Good. I will... I will find consecutive you. hours. Can I do like 1 a.m. to 8 a.m.? No, 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 48 hours. 24. And if the jersey's not here hours. next week, we're extending it to a week. There mm -hmm. we go. And, and you're lucky. I'm not going to be here for that. So the trash you, you're going to enjoy that. Oh, yes. Oh, All so, right, everybody. Tree will not be here next week. Yep, we I'm going on vacation. So I know it's uh, – it's, yeah, I know. I, I shouldn't be going on vacation, but I mean – it, this has been planned. Hey, enjoy for yourself. It's good yeah. for your mental. I'm supposed to enjoy it's myself, good. really. So much stuff Absolutely. to do. Refresh, rejuvenate. The work will still be there. Rejuvenate. No, the work will always be there, and then I need to oh, keep yeah. doing more work. This is how it is. I all right, like I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up, this. fellas. Wonderful show. Thank you for all the support. Uh, thank you for everyone who contributed to the super chats. We appreciate yeah. you. You have made our punishments a reality. You are all wonderful people. Uh, for clickbait sports and everyone, uh, wildflower turquoise, mental health, more <laughs> like that's bad sports, 4.69 nice, and Ray Hanley, man, you have made it to the end of clickbait sports. You should have called him TJ Rubley fan. Ball. They love TJ Rubley. TJ Rubley fan. Oh, you got to end the show.